Okay, what's going on? Check this out. Seven years ago, almost to the day, I built my first bug out bag, my first intentional bug out bag build. It's seven years ago, and that feels like a lifetime. See, like, who was president seven years ago? Was that Obama? Yeah, I think Obama was president. We obviously had no COVID. We didn't know social media was literally the most evil thing that's ever been invented by mankind. And uh, yeah, the world was just an incredibly different place. But I decided it was time to build a bug out bag. I built a bug out bag. I was so excited about it. I did what any normal person would do, which is upload it to YouTube. And by doing so, I didn't know at the time though, that this video would turn out to be the breakout success video that my channel needed, gaining almost a quarter million views in its lifetime. Now, I'll warn you in advance, it's a little cringy, it's a little bit awkward, and I have no idea why I chose some of the gear that I chose for my bug out bag. But hey, listen, that's what happens when you don't have any training and no experience, and that's why we're gathered here today. You and I are going to critique my first bug out bag build. Let's get into it. All right, so I got the video queued up here. Let's go ahead and get into it. I'm gonna play the intro and we're gonna figure out what the hell this guy's even talking about. All right, guys, what's going on? Listen, I wanna take a few minutes to uh, show you a quick breakdown on my long-term sustainment kit. This is the kit that I referenced in my previous blog post. It has enough, um, items and essentials in it to last me what I think is a reasonable period of time in the field, which is about five to six days. Anything beyond that I think is um probably pressing the skill sets of a normal individual and myself included since I'm not somebody who comes from a background of uh, many, many years of primitive uh, survival and hunting and so on and so forth. So um five to six days is about how long I figure that guy is reasonable survival field after that then you better But in the meantime, let's go ahead and have a look at the kit. Okay, so yeah, that sounds promising, and yeah, that intro is a little bit awkward, and the lighting is awful and everything, and the audio is, but whatever. It is what it is. I gotta start somewhere, you know what I'm saying? So, that's what the video is gonna be about. Now, let's go ahead and have a look at that gear. All right, so first, the pack, the FLIBE main pack. I had forgotten all about this bag. I used this for years, absolutely loved it. I only replaced it maybe, I think it was about two years ago with the Exo Mountain K2 pack, which was, a massive improvement but for the time that i used the flibe main pack great asset to my gear can literally fit like an entire family in this thing it's a, just ridiculous the size and the amount of stuff that you can attach to because it's literally just covered with molly webbing everywhere with that being said uh what else we got here we got the sleep system got the thermo rest i still got that the sleeping bag was okay but turned out to uh yeah it was rated down to 20 and probably is more like 40 degrees right i learned that the hard way um you know i got a wooby here that's great but do i really need a sleeping bag and a wooby i don't know sleep system could use a few upgrades that's fine you know these days i'm more of a hammock guy anyways but what else we got here we got the hydro pack that is part of the flib pack system and i love doing using it because it attached and it was modular, it's part of the pack system, literally attaches to that main pack. These days I'd probably ditch it, save, save some of that weight, and just use an actual water bladder, store it inside the pack itself. But with that being said, uh, what else we got here? We, oh, right, we got the good old chest rig. I love this thing, I still have it. It's a Russian smear chest rig, and I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I was going to war. I don't know, it's pretty tactical, and these days I have a different mindset, so I would ditch that completely, or I have ditched that completely, and I've replaced it with just a very small Minuteman style chest rig, which honestly, I don't even need, I can just run like a very scaled down battle belt as well, but um, you know, save some weight there, right? We got some tools here, you know, multi-tool, flashlight, that's good. Um, I've since upgraded these binoculars to a uh, Vortex monocular with the rangefinder. And, uh, oh, check that out. There's the Gerber LMF2. Love that knife. I actually broke that one and then flex the Gerber lifetime warranty and they sent me a brand new one. Can't beat it, right? Uh, so yeah, headlamp, map, compass, yeah, all those, yeah, all, all, all that looks good to go, but oh my goodness, my shelter items, oh my, <laughs> right. These heavy duty metal stakes, why? I don't know, like, I mean, maybe I was concerned about a tornado, like destroying my shelter, but I've long since ditched the heavy metal stakes. Um, I also had two folding saws, the Silky and the Sven folding saw. 
really only need one. And then the bungee cords, I was trying to set up something where I could like put up shelter real quick and bring it back down. Just didn't really work out. So, you know, these days I replaced that with 550 cord or with bank line that I already I have attached to my tarp. Um, what else we got here? Oh, we got the massive E-Tool. Takes up, I think that was, I think that was an actual military issue E-Tool and weighs like five pounds, right? So unless the mission absolutely requires you to dig a fighting hole or a fighting position or a bunker or whatever, you can kind of just leave that at home and save that extra five pounds for something a little more important. Uh, all right, so what do we got over here? We got firepower. We got the main boomstick and the secondary boomstick both of which have been lost in an unfortunate boating accident. Really sad, uh, you know, cause I just thought about it, you know, for a while I was like, you know, I need all these guns. And then I realized love trumps all. So who needs firearms, right? Kind of overkill. Um, yeah, so got that, don't need that. Uh, here's, oh, I got a fire kit here. And I think in the fire kit, I just had some basic, you know, like commercial tender, some matches, stuff like that. And I have this, uh, paracord hand grenade which has a survival kit stored inside that so that seems good i'm covering some bases think about the five c's right cordage container combustion cover and uh and one other can't remember the other one i'll post it up right here but keep those five c's in mind as we talk about this kit right so now let's get on this last bit here we got some clothes and i did a really good job i think of layering these clothes and having the base layer and having extra socks i got an extra set of camis here but i failed on putting in any sort of civilian clothes at all i guess my plan was to have zero contact with civilization at all right um so not having civilian clothes there a little bit of a mistake i've changed that out now i have a set of camis and i have civilian attire um but yeah so let's keep looking here uh what do we got oh wow i have a life straw for water purification okay yeah and that's it oh my god what was i thinking um oh wait oh no hold on it's not that bad it looks like i have some water purification tabs here but damn you know like i don't know what i was thinking there but hey at least i got the water purification tabs and i have the stainless steel canteen so that's good i got a win on that one but that water that life straw you know i i man i do i have a life straw around here there's a life straw i think around here somewhere i don't know i think i pretty much i think i pretty much just retired the life straw i just run sawyer mini or sawyer squeeze from now on and uh what i do and this is th this is a great let me just show you guys this real quick uh this is a great way to like run with your uh water purification kit i got this big open mouth hydro bag here you just scoop the water up in it and uh, you, this is 16 millimeter threads, so I could attach my Sawyer Squeeze, which is inside the bag right there. And that's literally all I need, plus the canteens. I wish I would've known that back then, but hey, listen, you gotta get training and you gotta get experience to figure out what actually works for you. And I found out real quick, drinking from random puddles that I could find with a life straw was just not working for me. So what else we got here? Um, we got some food, not a lot of food. It looks like maybe, three, four, five days worth of food. Not really much, not great, but yeah, it's decent, right? Nowadays, I'm much more intentional with the way I pack my food and I really try to keep macros in mind and carbs and fats and proteins and all that kind of good stuff. So um, yeah, once again, training and more experience just gets you better and gets you like further along the path of having a set of gear that actually makes sense, right? Um, so yeah, we got that and we got a med kit here. Med kit looks pretty decent enough. Looks like we got some combat gloves, gauze. we got some stuff for trauma. Ah, not bad, uh, it's okay. Nowadays, what I do is I have a primary IFAC that's dedicated to you know trauma and heavy bleeding events and stuff like that that can kill you, gunshot wounds, puncture wounds, stab wounds, stuff like that. And then I also have just a small first aid kit for all the little boo-boos, cuts and scratches, foot care, and things of that nature. All right, so yeah, lots of changes in the past seven years and none of those, none of those at all would be possible without training and the experience that I gained from that training. Now, for you YouTube creators out there, my God, I am so sorry that I shot almost that entire video in one continuous shot, holding the camera with my hand and pointing with a stick. So I would say that was one of the biggest changes 
too that I've had over time. I don't quite film that way, but hey, listen, I had to start somewhere. So please forgive me. But keeping all that in mind, keeping the fact that I was a total noob really when I built out this kit, what are your thoughts on what I have there? Let's do like a, let's do like a scale of one to 10, a rating, okay? So let me know down there in the comments, scale of one to 10, how would you rate this survival kit? If I'm looking at it super critically, I would give it a four, maybe a five. If I was being super positive, maybe a six. A seven would kind of be a stretch, but I would love to know your opinion down there in the comment section. So I was just thinking, if I could travel back in time, seven years, and hook myself up with some really good information to further my evolution as a survivalist and to speed things up, what would I tell myself? And then it dawned on me, I would just give myself the comprehensive bug out bag guide that I built last year. This document is incredible. It's super beautifully illustrated and it has all the knowledge and information that you need to build a bug out bag from scratch based on the five C's of survival. And the good news today is the fact that you don't have to go back in time. You don't have to do any of that. You can get this document right now and level up your survival kit and maybe get some ideas and some thoughts on things that you may not have considered before. So check the pin post, check the description for this 100% free download, and I will see you in the next video.